Today we're going to be unboxing a pretty premium product from ASUS. So you can tell from the deluxe moniker that this is a high-end board. This is their P8P67, so I'm going to go ahead and interpret that for you. P8 means it is the current generation of Intel CPUs, so that means we have full support for Intel's LGA 1155 socket processors. P67 is the chipset. Deluxe is what this board is all about, so you're going to find pretty much every feature that you could possibly want. We have dual gigabit LAN, we have USB 3.0, we have a Bluetooth, okay, we'll have to figure out what that is in a minute, Bluetooth enjoyment. All right, we have full digital VRM, which is the most precise, and this, this one's actually the big one for me, EFI BIOS. So that means that you have a full mouse interface with your BIOS, including support for things like a scroll wheel, like imagine that. Mouse with scroll wheel support in the BIOS. Okay, so moving over here to the right hand side of the front of the box. There you are. Oh, hold on. I'll turn it off for a sec. Okay, so full support for the uh, Intel Core series of processors on 1155. You got the P67 chipset, and that's pretty much everything that's there. Up here, this is interesting. So they have their digital VRM. EPU, so that's their, I think it's efficiency processing unit, or it's basically for making things more energy efficient, and then they also have their TPU. Okay, so those are dedicated processors. Moving over to this side, we have the world's first, okay, so the ultimate turbo processor, TPU, is a chip for their auto -tuning, tuning and turbo V functions, so that is their automated overclocking. We've also got the EFI BIOS, which I talked about already. AI Suite 2 is their Windows software, so it consolidates all of their SUS features into one software package. Okay, we've got their EPU, which is, as I said before, is for energy efficiency. And we have support for, oh, look, this is interesting, Quad GPU SLI and Quad GPU Crossfire X. Okay, DTS surround. And let's move along to the back. I like this box. I love it when there's a window to see the board through. Big fan of that, actually. Okay, so, oh, let's find out what BT Go is. Okay, Bluetooth mod. Oh, it just means it has Bluetooth. Oh, that's simple then. Okay, digital power design, the new standard. So their new generation intelligent processors with Digi Plus VRM. Control and 16 plus 2. Wow, that's a lot of phases. So they have a 16 plus 2 phase power design on this particular board. Basically, that's to deliver cleaner power to your CPU, which should allow, in theory, for better overclocking. So that's a good thing. Complete USB 3.0 solution, including back panel, as well as front panel USB. And they've called out the front panel USB again here. Extra SATA 6 gigabit per second support, so you actually have four ports on this board. Whereas with all of the previous generation, well I should say almost all of the previous generation Intel boards, that is on the P55 chipset, we'd only see two USB 2.0 or 3.0 ports and two SATA 6 gigabit per second ports. So let's have a look at what we have in terms of accessory package. We've got an IO shield. We have four SATA 6 gigabit per second ports and two SATA 3 gigabit per second ports. Please note these are identical other than the colors on the cables. There's no reason that you can't use one for the other and vice versa. We have an SLI bridge. We have their Q connectors. So that allows you to easily plug in your front panel connectors and then plug the whole brick into your motherboard. We have a front panel USB. Oh, this thing's heavy. Okay, so here it is. So front panel USB 3.0 box. It's got a nice sort of finish on the top of it here that is quite quite classy. It plugs into, or rather slots into, a three and a half inch drive bay. And then this cable is going to run over to your motherboard where they have a USB 3.0 front panel header. Outstanding. Oh yeah, there's what it looks like from the front as well. Okay, so that's a great feature, especially because most cases these days don't have uh, USB 3.0 integrated in a, in a he with a header on them uh, like that in the front. So DigiVRM DC Go, there's a little user guide, and here is your full user guide for this motherboard, including a Powered by Sue sticker and a DVD that you don't need because you can download the latest drivers and utilities off of the ASUS website. Now let's pull this guy out 
and have a look at what there is to see on the P8P67 Deluxe. So first of all, I'll tell you guys, I really like the aesthetic of this particular board. It's pretty much in line with what they were doing on their P55 boards, other than the Republic of Gamers series board. So we've got kind of a pale and dark blue and white and black color scheme, which actually goes together a lot better than it might initially sound like, as you guys can obviously see. I love what Asus has been doing lately with their uh, PWM heat sink designs. Uh, my personal favorite was their, what I call their Fortress of Solitude one, where it was kind of like a spiky thing, but I like this too. This is kind of like, uh, could be waves or it could be grass, could be kind of anything actually. Very abstract, I like it. You can see the 16 phase power design under these heat sinks. Okay, so there's probably gonna, yep, there's a couple more going around the corner over here. And then they've also got some of their Key Asus branding on the board as well. So they've got their dual intelligent processors two over here as well as uh, ASUS logos uh, sprinkled liberally uh, along the board. Okay, so let's have a look at the layout then. And I'm just gonna lift this up so we can start in the middle where we have our LGA 1155 socket. So as I mentioned before, that has full support for Intel's new core series processors on the 1155 socket. And here in the top left corner, we have our eight pin connector exactly where it belongs and it's optimal, ideal, and preferred location. Over on the right side of the board, we have our four uh, DDR3 slots supporting dual channel operation, as well as our 24 pin connector in its ideal location along the right hand edge of the board. We have our memo K button here as well as their uh, TPU processor switch. So bear in mind that is there. Okay, let's keep moving down the board. We're going to find our USB 3.0 header. This might seem like an odd location for it, but when you look at how short the cable is on the front panel connector, that is probably the reason for the header to be located there. So when you plug this in in the front of your case, right, you're gonna only have to run it this far to get to the USB 3.0 header. So you can pretty much reach anywhere in front of a typical case without any hassle. Okay, in terms of storage, we have SATA 6 gigabit per second, so those are color-coded dark blue and white, and then we have four SATA 3 gigabit per second ports, which are color-coded pale blue. Here is our chipset heatsink. Hey, why don't you take this off? You can see it a little better. Ooh, I like that. Check that out. So it actually has a bit of texture to the ASUS logo on there. It looks really, really sharp. Aesthetics matter to me, guys. I, I, I actually do care. When I'm shopping for a motherboard, I wanted, I have a windowed case, and it's, the cameraman's looking at my Star Wars t-shirt again. I have a windowed case, and uh, I do like to see a, a nice looking board because really that's the largest thing in your case, so it's gonna be kind of overwhelming if it's ugly. So here we have a an LED post indicator, so that'll give you any error codes if you're having problems getting your system to boot up. And uh, next over here, we have our USB 2.0 front panel headers. We have a reset and power switch, both built in. There's our EPU switch, so that's for the other intelligent processor. And then moving up to our PCI slot layout. So we have one, two PCIe 1X slots. We have two PCIe 16X slots, but please note the P67 chipset, or yeah, P67 chipset, much like the P55 chipset, has support for a single card in 16x mode, two cards in 8x mode, and not two cards in 16x mode. Okay, it doesn't matter in terms of performance, but it is a distinction that you should be aware of. If you want dual 16x slots, you're going to have to move up to x58. So we've got two PCIe, uh, two PCI slots if you have any legacy devices. And then down here, this is a physical PCIe 16X slot, but this one operates only at 4X. So you can either put a 1X card down here, or you can put in a 4X card, like a uh, RAID controller or something else like that, really high-end NIC, whatever the case may be. Moving along to the back of the board, we have all of these options. So let's, oh yeah, there's our Bluetooth. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight USB 2.0 ports. We have one of those PS2 uh, mouse keyboard combo ports that I'm so fond of. We have optical audio out as well as coaxial audio out. Two eSATA ports 
And then we've also got, like I said before, our Bluetooth. We have one FireWire port. We have two gigabit Ethernet ports. And I should mention, these are running off of the Intel built-in LAN rather than a third-party controller. And that's one of the things that ASUS actually calls out right on their board. Intel Ethernet, great capability. Okay, we have a clear CMOS switch as well as 7.1 analog audio on the back of the motherboard. That pretty much covers everything I wanted to say about the P8 P67 Deluxe. Thank you for checking out my unboxing and don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.